Did you know that the word sports actually came from the French word deport? I definitely didn't. But then again, I don't know a lot of things about sports. Real fanatics will tell you they know sports because they've seen it all, but very few actually know about the history of the game itself. For example, when we think about the sports basketball, baseball, and boxing, at least one of our favorite players to watch is a minority. There are arguments that stir up every now and then about Kobe or LeBron, Pacquiao or Mayweather, Sabathia or Papel Bon. Funny thing is that these arguments wouldn't even exist in the past. Mind-boggling, isn't it? The game we know today has undergone huge transformations diversity-wise in the last hundred years or so that sometimes we ignore the past that started at all. Without the past, there would be no Kobe, LeBron, Sabathia, or Mayweather to argue for, which is why we decided to unravel the history of the minorities that broke the color barrier. Anyone who knows basketball knows who Michael Jordan is. Six-time NBA champion, five-time MVP, 10-time All-NBA first team, two-time Olympic gold medalist, and one of the 50 greatest players in NBA history. The drive, hangs, fires, yes! scores! He scores! The Bulls lead 87-86 with five and two tenths. Everyone wants to be like Mike, but I wonder, who made it cool to be like black? Was it the NBA all-time leading scorer, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar? Or Mr. 100 Point Man himself, Will Chamberlain? Three home runs tying the record for most home runs in a World Series game by a single player. The only other players to have accomplished this are Babe Ruth and Reggie Jackson. Now, Albert Pujols has his name in the records besides these great icons in the game of baseball. How clutch is that? Amazing. Simply amazing. A true fan is aware of this historical moment and of course of Albert Pujols' astonishing skills during the regular season. Although Pujols is merely 31 years old, he's already projected to be among the top 10 players in the game. He's a role model to many who aspire to play baseball and is anticipated to break the home run record in the near future. But once again, we ask ourselves, who made it possible? Who paved the way for Pujols, allowing him to play in the majors and excel like he is? Was it Juan Marichal, the Dominican pitcher known for his intimidating windup? or Roberto Clemente, the first Latin American Hall of Famer. I am America. I am the part you won't recognize, but get used to me. Black, confident, cocky. My name, not yours. My religion, not yours. My goals, my own. Get used to me. The greatest, the people's champion, the Louisville Lip. Muhammad Ali, probably one of the greatest trash talkers in the history of the sport. Ali once said, it's not bragging if you can back it up, and his three heavyweight championship titles are proof of that. We recognize Ali as one of the greatest African American boxers who held the heavyweight championship, losing a mere 5 out of 61 times in his boxing career. But once again, who preceded this legend? How is it possible for us to talk about him in and out of the ring? Was it Joe Lewis, American Boxing Magazine, the ring's choice for the number one greatest punch of all time? Or Sugar Ray Robinson, the man Ali proclaimed to be the greatest boxer of all time? You've seen what the modern superstars can do in each sport, but now it's time to introduce the pioneers who made it possible for us to marvel at the legends in the first place.
Born in Alexandria, Virginia, on April 3rd, 1928, Earl Francis Lloyd had no idea the history he was about to set, being the first African American to play professional basketball on October 13, 1950, all during an era when the National League did not accept any black players. Earl attended West Virginia College, where he was an exceptional player. He led West Virginia to two colored intercollegiate championships. He was also named All-Conference three times and was an All-American twice. As a senior, he averaged 14 points and 8 rebounds per game, while leading West Virginia to a second place finish in the championship. Earl's NBA debut game came on Halloween night in Rochester, New York at center position. He scored 6 points and grabbed a game-high 10 rebounds in the Capitals 78-70 loss to Rochester. Unfortunately, this was one of only seven games that Earl was allowed to play in. After the Capitals franchise fell apart, Earl enlisted into the Army. When he came out, he joined the Syracuse Nationals midway through a training camp for the 1952-53 season. On one occasion, during the Nationals game in Spartanburg, South Carolina, Lloyd was not allowed to play in the game or go to the arena because of the color of his skin. This altercation, however, did not break Lloyd's spirit, but instead motivated him to play with the Nationals. And in 1955, they would do what every team and every player always dreams of, becoming champions. In 1960, Lloyd would go on to retire from the NBA, playing in 10 seasons with three different teams averaging a career 8.4 points a game and 6.4 rebounds. Earl's experience speaks to the era of the time he lived in. In fact, according to Lloyd, spectators in St. Louis, Baltimore, Fort Wayne, and Indianapolis were particularly hard on him. He was spit on. Some asked to see his tail, others asked him to go back to Africa. Lloyd said he was rarely able to go into restaurants or hotels with his team. All of such were acts of hatred and rage against a brave man who broke the color barrier placed on sports. Lloyd was able to do so while segregation and the civil rights movement were causing a stare in the way in which African Americans were treated. Lloyd was able to push for this course by using basketball as a motive to fight for the same reason, the integration of African Americans in society.